Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today we're getting personal and we're opening up yet another can of worms. Trust me, someone's feelings are getting hurt. Oh yeah, that's amazing. They can put the flavor of that bad shoulder as well as all that time you don't have to practice in one can. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah, so in all seriousness, this actually is a topic that I'm usually pretty passionate about in a very positive way, however, but this time it has gone a little bit too far, and particularly with the archery season that we just had here in 2020. I know COVID made it a little bit weird, but it's really showed where the industry is headed in a lot of different ways as it pertains to when actually hunters get into the field. So I want to talk a little bit more about this, and particularly coming from a state here in Pennsylvania, where we A, have a lot of hunters, and particularly a lot of archery hunters now and B we have uh, probably incorporated crossbows more recently definitely within the last decade and how it has really changed the landscape of archery hunting and how archery season really gets viewed not just for archers but for other weapons as well so there are obviously a lot of caveats here and of course I'm not against crossbows I never have been and never will be crossbows are an excellent way to keep people in the sport of archery and that's why I will happily sell you a crossbow if you come into the shop that I work at I will strongly recommend recommend crossbows to you if you're in certain caveats and certain situations. But there are a lot of people out there that are really starting to abuse crossbows as they come into the sport of archery. And now crossbows have now really within the past two to three years crossed over a threshold and into a different echelon where no longer you are using a crossbow to make up for a disadvantage that you had in the past. So I want to kind of break this down a little bit as to why I'm kind of getting a little fired up about this now and as to why I think it's going to eventually ruin a lot of the sport for a lot of different people. In originally for the intended use of crossbows being allowed for everybody to use the kids and those that are disabled or on their older side and just quite frankly don't have the ability to pull back a bow anymore. Also, I work with kids that are 10, 11, 12 years old. I'm a school teacher, so I get to see the awesome impact that crossbows get to have on those kids during that archery season where they can go out and shoot their first buck or their first doe, whatever, in a season that's actually really fun. They can go out during the rut. They can go out during early October when the seasons and the weather is a lot more applicable to young kids being able to sit, uh, sit still and stay warm and enjoy the time on stand with their mentor, you know, their dad, their uncle, their mom, their grandfather, whomever it may be. That is really cool. And I get to see that with kids. We get to swap stories in school of them being successful in the field. However, I'm getting a lot of those stories now are transitioning to, yeah, I was doing it and my dad was also doing it or my mom was also doing it. And I'm like, well, how old are your folks? Well, they're in their 30s and 40s. And I'm like, where's their bow? The biggest thing that I really have enjoyed about crossbows since they became applicable for everybody to use is that it allowed kids who physically can't pull back our state's minimum poundage of 35 pounds or really just don't want to be shooting and their folks, and I commend their folks, for not making them shoot a light poundage, uh, less efficient and less effective setup. Now, I'm not saying you can't kill a deer with 23, 24 inches of draw length and 35 pounds, but I'm going to say it's a lot more effective to have that 9, 10, 12, 11-year-old kid, whatever they may be, to shoot a crossbow where all they have to do is point, use the scope, and squeeze the trigger. They're used to doing that, maybe shooting pellet guns or small bore like 22. They're they're used to it if they've already gone into a firearm season and hunted with a gun. So that natural transition to a crossbow is super simple. Crossbows are also incredibly safe if used correctly, and it's a really great way to teach young kids firearm safety and crossbow safety as you go through the woods time there in the archery season. Strongly recommend it for kids, and that is what its original intention was used for. The same thing on the other end of the age spectrum. For those that literally can't draw a bow back, or they are back to shooting kid-like poundages, 30, 35, 40, 45 pounds. They know they're not as effective and as efficient. They don't know in the cold with their stiff shoulders. My granddad is a perfect example of this in his 70s. Lots of wear and tear in his body in the 70s, and he can't draw back his normal 50 to 55 pounds. And he is using the crossbow 
in the rut and during the late season. He still takes his bow. He's a diehard archer, diehard bow hunter, and he will take it out in the early season when he can stay warm and stay mobile. But when it gets into the 20 degrees outside, you're sitting for multiple hours on stand, he physically cannot get a 40 to 50 pound bow back. And that makes sense. He's in his 70s. But now I'm seeing a whole bunch of people. Oh, I just, my shoulder, my shoulder's so bad. Or the worst, I don't have time to put in. It makes my blood boil. And, you know, and I'll sell you a crossbow. I'll sell you the $250 crossbow. I'll sell you the $4,000 crossbow. I have no problems with that. It gets you into the woods and it's a licensed sale for the state of Pennsylvania, which is where all of our DC and our work and our conservation work really comes from, is from licensed sales. But gosh, it just makes my blood boil a little bit when a guy can come into the shop, buy a $250 crossbow, or heck, you can even get a $200 crossbow that has the minimum poundage range, and within 15 minutes of sighting it in, putting it together, he is just as effective as I am practicing during the wintertime, practicing during the springtime, practicing during the summertime. Thousands, hundreds, and thousands of arrows a year, and he can do the exact same level of effectiveness. Whoa. You've completely lost the disadvantage purpose of the crossbow. The disadvantage purpose of the crossbow is to help those that are disadvantaged with a short draw length, light poundage, like kids who can't be as effective, buck fever moment, send an arrow eight feet over a deer's back, or worse, not mortally wound one. Same thing's true on the other end of the spectrum, the age spectrum. You got to shoot because your body's breaking down. At 40 years old, 50 years old, you are not broken down. Unless you lived in a mine shaft, bent over for 30 straight years, you can draw a bow back. And the whole, you know, I don't have enough time thing, where, what do you do with your life? I need like 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day. Now, if you live in an area, obviously, like you can't go out in your backyard and shoot, I commend you on that one. That's way more difficult than what I have. I can just step right off my back porch here. But it is not an excuse then to say, oh, well, you know, I don't need to practice. Yeah, you do. You still need to get out and practice with your crossbow. You still need to be making ethical shots. You still need to be figuring out how your equipment works. People are starting to treat crossbows like firearms. And this is really where I'm headed with this today. Because now in the, here in 2021, we've had a lot of crossbows get released that have now solidified where the mark, crossbow market is headed and why I'm really starting to believe that crossbows don't have as much of a place in the archery season. I... I struggle with the like the idea what they do. I think it's in Wisconsin. They have a separate season for both crossbows and then regular compound or traditional bows. They have separate seasons for that. I don't think we're quite there yet, but what we've started to do is now be, uh, treat crossbows almost like firearms. And because of that, we've now allowed, allowed other seasons into the archery season that do include firearms. So this is a Pennsylvania problem, but I imagine it's in other places around the country as well. So here we allow crossbows and regular bows all throughout the archery season combined. It's about six, seven, eight weeks, depending on how the year breaks down. This was one of the longer seasons that we had here, the 2020 to 2021 season. It's still going on right now. Actually, we get an extra week here in January. But the issue is now that we've increased our archery seasons, they've also decided they want to start sprinkling in firearm seasons in that archery season, which if you've already got crossbows in there, the effectiveness and the number of people in the woods is already much higher than if it was just regular compounds and traditional bows. So now you've started to sprinkle in an antlerless muzzleloader season, and that can be an inline or a flintlock muzzleloader. And we all know that inline muzzleloaders are far superior today than they ever have been. You're talking 150 to 200 yard guns easily. And then also they've thrown in a three day antlerless firearm season for the youth and disabled veterans. At least I think it's on the disabled end, definitely for the youth. So now you've given kids the ability to shoot a deer in October, middle of October, right? Smack in the middle of our archery season, the ability to shoot their first deer with a gun when the weather is nice outside. So now where is the loss of disadvantage? Now we've got dudes with crossbows because they don't have the time and their shoulder hurts. And now we've got kids with two 43s and 270s walking around the woods in full orange and archery season. What? And then you, and then you throw in small game, you throw in the upland bird. What are you doing? Oh, it just, it drives me nuts. It absolutely drives me nuts because now we've started to allow firearm-like weapons 
in the archery season now we're just throwing in firearms because eh, we need some antlerless deer killed off gives kids the opportunities gives you know people that might be disabled or our veterans an opportunity which again i have no problem with this the problem is now you're just starting to ever expand it and i imagine it's happening across the country and it's happening across the state of pennsylvania where i'm at in particular we're starting to see more and more people leave the compounds and traditional bows behind and jump into crossbows and that's allowing our powers that be to assume more firearm like equipment and now today in 2021 we've got crossbows that are shooting over 440 feet 440 feet is 50 feet a second you've got crossbows and commercials that are doing 100 yard groups you've got crossbows excalibur just released a double barreled crossbow now the effectiveness or usefulness of that who knows it's just been released but now you've got two shots back to back you've basically just made yourself a firearm and this is where i'm really starting to get and drawing the line and getting frustrated with it because we're going to keep seeing this on that end. compound bow is still a compound bow still a compound bow i got to draw it back put the pin on what i want to shoot at an effective safe range and squeeze it off and execute a clean shot anybody can pick up a crossbow whether it's 250 bucks or 4,000 bucks you can pick up that crossbow i can shoot it you can shoot it you can't pick up my bow and be accurate with it it's just not set up for you your face pressure might be different your anchor is different you can't pick up my bow and have it work for you i can't pick up your bow and have it work for you but if you've got your crossbow i got my crossbow we could flip flop we can change it's just like passing down the grandfather's old 30 30 winchester lever action down to kid to kid and they all kill their first deer with it it's no different now it just has a string and shoots a bolt it's exactly the same it no longer belongs in the category and particularly now with today's equipment shooting 450 feet a second that it doesn't belong in the archery category anymore and again this this idea of loss of disadvantage that kid shooting 35 pounds like a 24 inch draw length is getting like 200 feet a second with a 350 grain arrow right i'm vastly overtaking that at 31 inches and 60 pounds with a 480 grain arrow let's say but that kid and me are on the exact same level playing field or that kid or that 45 year old with that really bum shoulder they're on the exact same playing field with that 440 feet a second crossbow so where's the disadvantage that's been lost now you are both on the same advantage level the exact same it doesn't change now i'm not saying i want to overlord over kids and women and people with shorter draw lengths and lighter arrow setups that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is why do we let everybody have the advantage that we just want to give to the people that are already at a disadvantage i i just don't understand and i don't understand why we keep adding more and more of these things and adding more now into the firearm side right in the middle of archery season golly gee it just drives me nuts i can't take my bow out they don't break up gun season for a week of archery only why would you do that that would be ridiculous you want to have your season stick with the season stick with at least the general weapon category we don't need to be throwing that in there i just don't understand it i'll never understand it i don't really care if you understand it or not oh, i just don't uh, it's frustrating I'm so parched all right so thanks so much for letting me get that off my chest i hope you enjoyed it laughed at it at least a little bit if you got angry mash your keyboard and leave a comment down below send me an angry email averagejackarchery at gmail.com facebook message dm on instagram whatever you want to do i don't care I just had to get this out and you guys just so happen to be the audience that's willing to listen or at least give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending on which way you see it. If you have an experience though from a different state or a different country, please leave that in the comments section below. I actually really like hearing other people's opinions and views and how their local DNR has handled crossbows and the ever evolving uh, era of adding different seasons into the archery season that we haven't seen in the past. Like I said, please leave that down below. I love to hear about those things and we can have a comment section that actually benefits us a little bit on uh, all sides seeing it from different states from around the globe all right so i hope you're able to get outside enjoy the sport of archery archery hunting if you so choose even if it is with a crossbow and we'll get to see you next time